started. Um, so yeah, so this year um, is a really special year. Um, we have everybody joining in. If you're joining in, let us know where you're tuning in from. We have members from all over the world. Um, this is a special year because um, we just recently wrapped up, um, and Sai was a part of it, the first ever international octopus photography competition uh, with the Explorers Club. And I just think it's it's wild, you know, ever since um, I remember your book came out back in 2015, Sai, I remember thinking, you know, and looking for uh, tons of things in the world that that showcased the octopus. And can you believe that it's taken so long to have a first ever international octopus photography competition? Oh my gosh. And we got so many entries, Warren. I, I just, I was overwhelmed. I mean, I was glad that at least a bunch of them had been, you know, uh, winnowed, winnowed out. Yeah. Uh, every single one that I saw just blew me away. I didn't know how we were going to decide on the winners. <laughs> And just a little bit later, we'll show you. I have um, some of the the winners, so we can just show everybody here. But um, yeah, so I was just I was really surprised. I'm glad that we were able to to do it. Yeah, we had hundreds of entries. I think over 20 plus countries entered into this um, competition. And as you know, Sai, octopuses exist in every single ocean. They're along every coastline on the planet. And so we it was really cool to have like representation from as far as like Japan, Australia. Um, tons of people from all over the world. Um, it's so appropriate because in so many cultures, octopuses stand for connection. Yeah. And, and you know, reaching out those beautiful stretchy arms. And so they really did reach out all over the world and people's portrayals of them and because they're so plastic, because they're so changeable, because there's over 200 different kinds, uh -huh. um, and because the same individual can look like a totally different octopus like half a second later, um, the opportunities to, that's an octopus, and that's an octopus, and that's an <laughs> octopus too. And it was like, oh, man, <laughs> you really needed a, nine brains to process it all yeah and what's what's really cool too is i mean we always say this you know octopuses have been on this planet since even before dinosaurs um and the fact that they're still alive they're still thriving um you know to me they represent the like one of the most iconic creatures if not the most iconic creature in the ocean we're a little bit biased here at octonation <laughs> Um, but just the fact that they've, they've evolved in every single ocean, um, and along every coastline and depending on where they live, what we've like learned is that each one has a unique superpower or talent that allows them to be a master of that given environment. And so we'll walk through, um, some uh, of the species today, but I wanted to pull, um, some of them up, um, here, okay. uh, and just talk about, um, octopus month. And uh, first off, I just want to say this is like, you know, how do you feel about this book? Because, you know, at, th at this point in time, when it comes to octonation and it comes to solve an octopus, every single time we post this book in our group, I mean, I'm sure that you see it, but like there's like hundreds of comments of people still to this day. And I looked up on um, Amazon just to see where it was. It's still number one in invertebrate zoology. It's still number one in marine biology. And it teeters between number one and number two in marine life. And that's since 2015. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, some people were surprised with the title, The Soul of an Octopus. How can somebody so closely related to clams and snails have a soul when you know, so many people would prefer to pretend that only humans have souls and therefore only humans matter. Mm -hmm. But to me, the staying power, power of the book is the souls of the octopuses who I personally got to know. And even though octopuses don't live very long, giant Pacific octopuses only live three to five years. And every time i meet a new giant pacific octopus i know that he or she is going to break my heart because i will fall deeply in love with them um but i think it is the souls of athena the very first octopus who i met and the soul of octavia who showed me with practically her last breath that even though we were separated by half a billion years of evolution she cared about me she cared enough about me to rise up from the bottom of her tank when she was old 
and sick and dying. She still wanted to be with me. So her soul goes on. And Kali, the, the darling young octopus who was so full of life and tragically died having crawled out of her tank and landed on the Vercon mat that is supposed to protect all of our, our creatures at the aquarium from diseases. And it does, but she just happened to land on that. And because their skin is kind of like the inside of our intestines and, and so incredibly permeable, that probably killed her mm. way too young. But her soul goes on. And these souls, I think, so touched all of the readers the readers that you, Warren, brought to me in droves mm -hmm. through the nation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they testify to this deep soul connection. And I, I, I'm sure it's the power of those individuals more than anything else that keeps connecting with readers. That's awesome. And I, I know, I remember the first time I read it uh, and I was, when I was younger, I remember thinking, um, you know, why aren't there more books? Why aren't there more, you know, places for me to go to learn about these creatures? And it wasn't until I read your book in, in 2015, when I, in the first three pages, you talk about how octopuses are, you know, throughout culture have been demonized, misrepresented. Aristotle said they were stupid, <laughs> you know, um, they just always had a bad PR agent. And I remember reading that and being like, yeah, but that's not their story. And, and now that social media exists, like we can set the record straight. And uh, so started the nation um, back, you know, back then, uh, I think like four or five months later after reading that book and sought out to take the torch that you so eloquently put in your book and, and, and light the internet on fire with, with just storytelling about the octopus as the superheroes of the sea and, uh, and having all these really unique, incredible superpowers. Uh, but it always surprises me even to this, uh, even to this day, um, when I log into uh, Amazon and I'm just like, it means something that this book is still number one, you know, since 2015. And it, and it should tell other authors um, out there um, that are considering writing, uh, you know, a book. I know that um, we're excited that in the next couple of days, uh, Donna um, Stoff, her book, Lady in the Argonaut, comes out. And it's all about. Oh, great. Yeah. That was yeah. Yeah. I saw I saw I was so excited when I saw your uh, your review of it. Um, but yeah. just incredible, incredible books. So I'm just glad that there are more, um, there's more books being written about them. And that's going to be an incredible one. So we'll put that in down in the comment sections for everyone to check out. I believe it's launching on the 8th, but uh, you can pre-order it now. Wouldn't that be the perfect day? Yeah. <laughs> World <laughs> Octopus Day. So from here, I just wanted to kind of go through um, and show off we're gonna do a little talent show. These were some of the videos on Octonation that uh, really took off and um, really demonstrated uh, different superpowers of the octopus. So I don't know if you've seen some of these videos, but I guess we can get your live reaction. Oh um, yeah, man, I, <laughs> I love this. this is so and, and, if, uh, and if you all like this, maybe we can make this, we could make this a reoccurring thing, Sai reacting to all of this octopus <laughs> content. Uh, but this is really cool. And, and what Octonation represents is, um, you know, the fact that we have underwater photographers all over the world that uh, submit um, their videos to Octonation. And we're able to publish them for everybody to see and storytell about how, like how they're out there and how they've been thriving for hundreds of millions of years. And so I just wanted to showcase some of those examples um, here with you all today. And so I don't know. Can you see this side? Yes, I can. Awesome. So this was uh, an octopus and an eel. Oh yeah, watch out, man. Yeah, and so what I thought was really, really cool about this video was that the octopus isn't afraid. <laughs> That's great. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so it was a standoff between this eel uh, and this octopus. You could see the octopus was saying like, you know, this is my den. Like, and what's really cool is that it flattened out its suckers, pulled its arms behind its its head like that, and is using its body as like a shield. Yeah. So, you know, what's really cool is that now we can start sharing these videos to everybody so they can see this resilience. But what does this represent to you, Sai? Oh, I mean, it's 
it's always great <laughs> to to see if that is the octopus's den in fact and someone else is in my den <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just get the heck out of there. I, I just I just love it. I mean, knowing what we know of, of, about mores and, and octopuses, that's their most deadly mortal enemy. Mm. And this this so shows not only that that this octopus is smart, that it's come up with a, a, a sort of novel way. I mean, who knows? Maybe he does this all the time, but, uh, you know, a novel way to get your worst enemy out of your house. It always makes you feel great. It's like Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. But I, what I thought was really cool about it too was, um, and we'll go to the next video really quickly, was just that because it knows, if that eel is able to grab a hold of, of my arm, I believe that it knows. If this eel is able to grab a hold of my arm, it'll do this thing Well, it turns into like an eel NATO, where it'll start uh, twirling its body and it's game over for the octopus at that point. But there's something about this octopus that just knows, you know, to put its arms back behind and tuck and use its whole entire body to kind of move forward. So when I see things like that, I'm just like, wow, like, you know, how does it how does it know to do that? You know, well, um, I love too how he, he does this, you know, just like a fighter, like a, like a boxer that you de you defend, you defend your eyes. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. Because they can't, they can't regrow their eyes. They no. can regrow their arms. Yeah. So just like another way that I'm just like, gosh, it's just to me, it's just so incredibly cool. Um, let's go on to this next one real quick. Um, move it here. It's movie night. It's it's movie night at Octonation. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's was get like, the let's, popcorn. <laughs> I was like, let's have a good time and watch watch some of these like these amazing feats of an octopus. Um, this one uh, is really cool to me. Uh, this was submitted. It went viral over on Octonation. And it's just a video of an octopus doing this maneuver. <laughs> oh, great. Cleaning uh, cleaning the suckers. Yep. And so when people uh, see this, they're always just like, is that octopus, is that octopus stressed out or what's going on here? And what's really cool for those of you who are watching this is octopuses, they can improve their sense of taste, smell, and uh, and grip on objects by kind of swirling their arms together and cleaning it off. And uh, what we know too is that they have this um, chitinous cuticle. It's almost like fingernails that protect their their sucker lining. And um, and so everyone says like this is how octopuses give themselves manicures. So uh, <laughs> it's how they kind of clean off. But it's just you know another example of just kind of showing how octopuses are more like us. You know, the fact that they have these nails on their suckers to protect them. Lots of times when octopuses are crawling over the ocean floor, people are just like, doesn't that hurt their suckers? And I'm like, nope, they have, you know, a special thing to protect them. So and look at that sea star in back of him. It's mm -hmm. ginormous. Right? Wow. <laughs> people are like, is that a giant sea star or a small octopus? Or is that like, what's going on here? Is that just like, what's <laughs> that was where a lot of the comments on this video. Really? Well, I remember when I first, um, when I went to the Seattle octopus blind date, people who didn't know what was going on, there were a lot of suckers going on. <laughs> um, and they're like, what? What's happening? Are they fighting? Is there one of them? Is there two of them? What's going, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> this is not like anything anyone had ever seen before. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because we have, we have a video of uh, mating, a mating situation happening. So mm. we can show people that. Um, this is one of my favorite videos. This is by our scientific advisor, Dr. Chelsea Bennis, um, the Octo Girl. And, uh, and she captured this video. She um, uh, moonlights as an engineer. She does all these things. She's an underwater photographer. She's just, she does it all. And uh, she created this uh, thing called the OMG, which was the Octopus <laughs> Monitoring Gadget. Um, okay. and, and she kept it in the water for over 24 hours to, to showcase these different, um, behaviors, um, the secret life of octopuses down there. And she captured this. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah! Right? Oh my gosh. And so you have this bird swooping down um and this octopus like i said it's it's camouflaging it's taking its arm it's it's punching at this bird it's like hey i'm not going down without a fight and i just think you know this is another testament to just their 
there. You know, most times when people see octopuses, they think, oh, they probably just like shrink or re- shrink away. Oh, and they're great. And, and, <laughs> you know, you remember the, the octopus and the eagle? Uh-huh. I mean, geez, man. I mean, if I do falconry and I'll, I'll tell you, an eagle is to this vertebrate that weighs 120 pounds, an eagle is can be a scary thing. Mm-hmm. But wow, to an octopus to be willing to take on an eagle. I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> so is yeah. that a gannet? What, what, who is that? Uh, uh, what is it? The cormorant or how do you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. And they can swim pretty quickly through the ocean. They can dive uh, incredible depths to, to capture food and prey items. Um, but not today. Not for this. Uh, not this not one. That, <laughs> not that octopus. Uh, this was an interesting uh, observation by Peter. He submitted this video to us, and it, I'd never seen two octopuses kind of size each other up like this. I don't know if you'd seen this video, Sai. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Right? So it's almost as if they're, like, playing patty cake or they're, like, oh my each other gosh. up. It actually, at one point, it, it completely envelops um the other octopus and then it kind of it kind of goes away and so everybody in the comment section we received hundreds of comments on this one and they were like is it trying to mate is it sizing up and i personally thought it was a um territory battle uh it didn't seem like it didn't seem like a mating mating situation happening here um but i was like i think i think this one's kind of fighting or saying hey i live here you know get away and then finally they got away but where, i just think it's really cool it, where was it filmed and what species are we looking at uh these are um day octopuses um okay. and i believe this was filmed i'm not i'm actually not sure but you know day octopuses they have a distribution all over the all over the world so um could have been could have been anywhere <laughs> but yeah i just thought that was a really really interesting behavior fantastic but you were mentioning um, octopuses mating, and I just think that this is a, a, a certain species do this, where they just kind of like walk around, and uh, almost like the male is on the female, like almost like a little hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, what an escort! Yeah, right. I was oh like, oh, this is this is kind of like a, a an octo back ride or like a, an Uber ah. situation <laughs> happening here. He does not want her to get away. No. And I think it's because he's like, you know, you just keep on hunting, honey. Like, make sure that you're fed. Because what we know is that if the dismount isn't a successful dismount off of the the female, then she will reach back around and eat him. So so I'm sure he's happy that she's maintaining foraging for food. (laughs) Jeez. Right? Can you imagine, you know? Well, anyway. (laughs) <laughs> say it sigh this is just the nation we're we're in front of friends oh gosh well it's kind of like you got your boyfriend over and <laughs> he's got one thing in mind and you're just eating pizza the whole time <laughs> <laughs> you're like uh do we really have to do this like, <laughs> yeah it's it's really interesting so basically he you know is on the back of her <laughs> back of her mantle and he this third right arm is his hectocotylus and he puts it in her mantle cavity and just hopes that uh she doesn't get aggressive and turn around and eat him um sometimes they don't even do this sometimes they'll mate at a distance you've seen that too oh yeah the sneaky yeah yeah he'll just they'll like stay in their lair and just send out the third Mm -hmm. arm yeah because i mean they can even regrow that arm yeah Although I'm sure you don't really want to lose it, but um, that's that's one set distance mating they call it. Yeah. Um, but those are, those are just some videos. I did want to kind of go over um, the first international octopus photography competition and show the winners from that. Um, so it was a really we hope that this becomes bigger and bigger every single year. Uh, we really want there to be a way that our members can vote. Um, for this first one, we were really trying to figure out how to create the tech to support that. Um, hopefully, um, this next this next go around, we can release all of the the uh, photos and videos to the nation, so we can get like a, a community vote 
um, because I know that everybody was like really, really excited to see these entries. And uh, so hopefully we can build the tech um, in this next competition where everybody can see the photos, they can vote on them, and we can kind of get the best of when it comes to a community standpoint, because I really want our community to be involved in this voting process. Because as Sai, you know, mentioned, it was really difficult <laughs> to vote. Oh, brutal. <laughs> and our community, I mean, gosh, it's hive mind, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like we've got all these experts out there who, and, and, some of our experts in art and some are experts in photography and some are experts in marine biology and let's get the hive mind to work at this yeah and we have i mean gosh we have so many people with octopus or cephalopod tattoos you've seen seen some of them in the group i mean we have hundreds of tattoos in our community uh and it is my like like i try to picture the perfect you know thing when because uh, I, I do this everywhere i go if i see somebody that has an octopus tattoo i feel and maybe somebody who's watching has done this before I feel really empowered to like go up to them and just show them, hey, we have a place where that would be celebrated. Like you would get hundreds of yeah. likes on that. Um, and uh, I tell them to go to octopusfanclub.com because that goes directly to our Facebook group. So if you're ever in a situation where um, somehow the octopus comes up or you make it, you know, come up, um, you can just tell people to go to octopusfanclub.com and it'll go straight to that Facebook group so that they can join. <laughs> yeah, I have sent so many people to the nation. Because, you know, if it's so great to have a community of people who can grow your knowledge and appreciate what you love and deepen your appreciation. I, I love that I have this community. Thanks mm. to you, Warren. Yes. Yeah, I mean, thanks to everybody. I mean, you, uh, I mean, and people were saying it. They're like, you know, this book has done so much for the octopus from the standpoint of sometimes the first people realizing that you know kind of to go back what aristotle said about them saying that they were you know stupid creatures for being curious and approaching a human hand and it was just them being curious about humans but he took that as like they should know not to come up to a predator like how dumb are they i know um, jeez yeah and i just thought no it's 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 being curious about you and i was like and that's just like that's such a, sh a sign of intelligence that hey i'm not afraid you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious enough to check you out. So, um, so yeah, I was, I was thinking about that when I'm just like, Aristotle got that wrong. He got a lot of things right, but he got that wrong. So he was one of the, the winners in the uh, portrait category um, by Erhan, and I believe he lives in, in Australia. And so what did you think of this shot, <laughs> Sai? Oh, I love the shot. I, <laughs> I, I loved it. Yes. Yeah, I certainly voted for this one. Yeah. This one was incredible. What I loved is that just the the because of the the positioning, the octopus being in the background and its arm being in the foreground, it almost like coming at you and just saying, Hey, you know, what's going on? Like it was like a an octopus selfie, you know. It totally um, looks like an octopus selfie. And if <laughs> I look at I mean, I you know me, I'm really not very good with technology <laughs> everyone was waiting for 10 minutes for my camera to work but this octopus he's got the technology down <laughs> yeah for sure um and see let's see this next the thing i love about this one too is i love maori octopuses um they're incredibly brilliant they're uh robust they're strong they're fearless there's this shot that i really love of a maori octopus going into a like it almost looks like a battle of snow crabs and they're like these giant um crabs and this this maori octopus just like is like ooh a buffet and like almost like throws its whole entire body and just canvases and then traps all these snow crabs and just goes to town and it just kind of just shows you how kind of fearless the species is and they're located in uh, New Zealand and in Australia. And uh, you know how like the giant Pacific octopus is the, the largest octopus in the world? The Maori octopus is the largest octopus species in the New Zealand Australian waters. Uh, and so that's their their GPO down there. <laughs> Everyone needs a GPO of some <laughs> right? um, Here is one in the environment category. Mm -hmm. This is Walking Through the Forest by Mariano Rodriguez. Uh, what did you think about this one, Sai? Oh, I loved how you know it, it almost looked like someone's in the convertible and their hair's blowing back and they're going down the highway and looking at the at the scenery um <laughs> i i i loved how it it showed the 
the kelp forest. Um, I loved how it showed the, the way the 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 waves mm -hmm. seem to be like like a wind yeah. blowing yeah. on the octopus. Um, I love the piece of it. What did you think? Oh my gosh, I, I love. I mean, the environmental category is you know aims to showcase the octopus and its environment. And I thought that this did an incredible job showcasing movement, showing showcasing the environment, that kelp forest in the background, and even the orientation from it, like you mentioned, showing that beautiful, you know, blue uh, ocean in the background. And uh, so, yeah, I was a huge, huge, huge fan of this one. Um, let's move on to the next. Uh, this was details in the details category. This is the winner um, called Mother Octopus by Kevin Lee. Right. Well, we got a lot. Remember, we had a lot of mother octopuses with eggs mm -hmm. and they all are so compelling because this is this intimate moment. And here's a creature who, you know, doesn't give birth as we do and yet they have a molecule so like oxytocin they call cephalotocin and they do mm -hmm. care for their eggs and um it's it's a, a a loving gesture i think love goes way back half a billion years mm -hmm. because i think life's first love had to have been the egg right mm -hmm. so but i I love all of the pictures of, because of course, you know, one of my friends, Octavia, I got to watch her care for her eggs, but her eggs were infertile. Um, but I, but the love was real, even though the eggs were not fertile. Mm. Um, but I, I, I loved the affection yeah. that this elicited when I looked at it. And it what like the apple of her eye, you yeah. know, what I thought was really cool is the, different ways in which mother octopuses um, lay their eggs. There's some species that attach them to, you know, um, plants. There's some species that lay them like this in a single, like the, like a single egg. Um, I believe the species is the, the pale octopus that lays them just in single strands in, in her den. And of course, you know, the giant Pacific octopus, they have festoons where it's like they tirelessly painstakingly braid thousands and thousands of eggs together and attach them in festoons in their den. And um, we're coming out with a blog uh, very soon about the different ways in which um, different species um, brood on their eggs. Because we even learned about that one a couple of years ago, um, the moose octopus that um, uh, I think brooded her eggs for four years straight, was it, Sai? Yeah, that was amazing, wasn't it? Gosh. <laughs> Talk about Octomom. <laughs> right. Four years of, of being on our eggs. And, you know, they asked, like, you know, how is that possible? You know, what, you know, what's going on? And like what I personally think is that life just happens a lot slower down there and uh, we're in freezing temperature waters. Um, and I think, you know, it just takes a little bit longer for things to form and, and to grow. And you know, what excites me the most about this is just the idea that perhaps this octopus has a longer lifespan, you know, than the giant Pacific octopus. Okay. Um, I'm not too sure about that, but it just goes to show you how much we still have yet to really uncover and discover about the octopus as a species. I right? wonder what time feels like to that octopus. Right. Spe especially the fact that it doesn't eat. Well, yeah, know. They, just, they never, they didn't observe it eating. So is it just the fact that its metabolism slows down to basically nothing? You know, yeah. um, you know, anything's possible. The patience exhibited by that mom. Yeah. This one was a winner in the behavior category. Uh, My Castle by Alex uh, Premiakov. Uh, again, members from all over the world submitting their uh, photography. This is a coconut octopus. What do you think of this one, Sai? Oh, I just love it. And it's just, it's also just a, beautiful image too you know um it's i, I love all this the swooping i love the the colors and the textures and it's just it's just lovely <laughs> and and then the personality you know you, you feel like you're you're seeing someone you know this isn't just a beautiful object this is mm -hmm. someone doing something essential in their life and you get to see that moment 
<laughs> yeah, and they discovered with this species, and it's called also the veined octopus, um, but they published a paper, uh, I believe in the 90s, about this, this species, and they, they titled the piece of paper, uh, Coconut Carrying Octopus. And so after they titled that paper, that the name just stuck. So they just started calling it, whether or not they used coconut halves or not. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I, I mean, it's kind of better than veined octopus, although veined octopus kind of shows you that they have those branching dark veins uh, down their mantle and cascading down their arms. Um, they're a really beautiful species that, that actually plans ahead. So, you know, they will grab shells around them and then they will go foraging out for, for food and all these different things, uh, knowing that they might encounter a predator and they might need a shield. And so, again, just, you know, um, they've been doing this for hundreds of millions of years. You know, this isn't their first rodeo. Um, you know, there are some species that, that do utilize tools like this to protect their squishy, vulnerable bodies. So I just think, you know, another cool thing about the International Octopus Photography Competition is just to, to do that, to showcase um, all of these different species um, and to show off some of these behaviors. <laughs> and I, I was alive when it was believed that man, as humanity was called, was defined as the only creature that, that used tools. Mm. And here's somebody, you know, separated from us by half a billion years who was using tools long before we were. Yeah. Rona says, ha ha, size doggies photo bombing us. <laughs> hey, Dexler, what's going on? We also have, we have tons of people in the in the chat. Hello, Andrew. Andrew Hackett's here. Always oh, good to have him around. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> awesome. And I think we have a couple more. This was the best in show. That's your favorite one, isn't it? <laughs> so this is Best in Show. This was Lavender Waves by Ernie Black. Um, and he is a, a Hawaiian photographer. Uh, and this is a Hawaiian day octopus. Uh, and uh, again, it's always such a stunning one. I mean, I, I own this. Um, I remember um, he had sent this to me um, a, a while back. And I was always so surprised. Um, you know, I had a say, obviously, in, in this competition, but all of the other judges, when it came to best in show, you know, this was one on their list, right? Yeah. Well, you've got excellent taste. <laughs> and so I just remember Ernie, who's so excited when we told them that he he got best in show. This is the first award that this photo has ever won. I can't um, believe that. Yeah, I can't believe it either. I was like, I Ernie, photo i was like ernie are you submitting this photo to any competitions and i was just like because this is the most one of the most stunning photos i've ever seen in my life and um it represents right here this octopus um uh it's called like a dematic um behavior where an octopus will attempt to to frighten or um puff up its body you know and say hey i'm bigger than i look um so you know don't eat me or don't, you know, attack me. It kind of uh, attempts to, you know, intimidate its um, a predators or anything that's trying to get it. And so in this moment, he, he had mentioned that he was filming this octopus and um, that he started taking photos of it and he captured this one. So I think it's a beautiful shot. <laughs> and I love too, that it captures the moment that the octopus was interacting with mm -hmm. the photographer because he was doing this to the photographer. Yes. And uh, another th really cool thing about this one is the Hawaiian Day Octopus. You know, people always talk about, I think there should be a book, you know, this is another book that we want to write is like how to identify um, these different species, what are their identifying features. And with this one, um, you can always tell a day octopus from all the other species because they have, I say spots and dots. So they have these um, spots that cascade up their arms, these white kind of spots. And then they have these two false oval eye spots that are just beneath their eye that you can barely see it here, but it's this this purple oval uh, and they flex those and, to make it appear as if, you know, they're bigger than they actually are um, to predators. And again, it's just one of those things that, that nature, you know, felt like it needed <laughs> in order to protect um, and another thing in its arsenal to protect itself and be on the defense when um, when things are coming after it. But yeah, so congratulations, Ernie, uh, for, for this best in show. <laughs> um, and I think I just wanted to show uh, for people that didn't know, this is 
uh, where they were displayed uh, at the Explorers Club in New York. Um, we did this in collaboration with them. And uh, this was, I took this um, before everybody got there just to kind of show um, people kind of like what it looked like. Everybody was going around um, and they were looking at the different ones. Um, I had turned on lights above them too. So I, I don't know why I didn't do it before the photo, but <laughs> uh, it, was a, there was a, it was a lot brighter. The images were there. And then this was uh, the room. Oh. Um, there was hundreds of attendees that showed up to, um, to World Oceans Week. And this is when they were able to be put on display for everybody. And so just kind of wanted to show people, um, you know, that everybody did enjoy <laughs> this. It was such uh, a popular uh, room. And, um, and so, yeah, congratulations again to everybody. I can't wait uh, to the next one uh, to be even bigger and better. So really excited. Um, and then also um, uh, before we headed out, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about our blog. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you go to octonation.com and scroll uh, down, we have a blog. Um, we brought on more science writers. Uh, we have uh, guest bloggers like Donna Staff. Uh, I told her, um, you know, to, I didn't tell her, I, I asked her politely. Um, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, hey, I was like, I really want to promote your, um, the new book that's coming out. Let's think of a creative way in which to promote it. And I said, what about a series of articles? I was like, can I hire you to write a series of articles? about the subject of the book so that we can promote the book in it. And so because her book is uh, Lady and the Argonaut, um, or is that is that the book? I believe it is. Um, yeah. So uh, she wrote the series of articles and her la latest one we published about two days ago and it's called Sperm Worms, How Mar Male Argonauts Taught Scientists About Octopus Sex. Um, and because it really was um, that this uh, species of octopus, they thought the males, they were like, we, we don't know. I don't think the males don't exist. Like, are the females like are, like inseminating themselves or like they, I mean, they really had no clue because there was really no way to to study them way back when. And um, this is actually how aquariums were invented. Right, Sai? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, to try to study how animals behave yeah you couldn't you couldn't hang around in the ocean it's really hard even now to study animals in their natural habitat in the ocean and yeah particularly octopuses because they're really you know you you can't even count them half the time because is this the octopus you just counted or wait that one was blue a second ago no it has <laughs> not no, and so, yeah, I just wanted to show that we do have this resource on our website um, that we update uh, and that this book is coming out. But this is a great article. Uh, if you want to get on our email list, you can just go to our website, octonation.com and, uh, and get on our email list so that we send an email out every single time we publish a new blog. Um, but really excited about this book coming out. And, um, and yeah, so just wanted to give our blog a quick shout out. And then... Um, that was pretty much it as far as my end for, for programming. Um, as far as Octopus Month and what we have uh, planned later on this month, um, I know on the 5th, we're doing a, a, a virtual octopus encounter. They've been super, super popular with um, Octonation and its members. Not everybody can either afford to get to an aquarium uh, or go to an aquarium, can get to an aquarium because they live in maybe like a landlocked state. And so there are tons of kids nowadays that are learning about the octopus through these virtual octopus encounters. And so we have been doing them um, with different organizations. And the organization that we're doing it with is um, Exploring by the Seed of Your Pants. Um, and it's by uh, Joe uh, Grabowski. And he does these amazing, um, he'll like send out like, um, like these old school like satellite Wi-Fi systems to parts of the world that we've never seen before. And um, he'll do like classroom, um, like uh, classroom, like he'll connect classrooms with these people and show them places in the world that have never been seen before. Um, it's just, it's an incredible organization. And so we're super excited that we get to uh, show all of his students all around the world, a giant Pacific octopus at Aquarium of the Pacific. Have you um, seen any of our virtual octopus encounters, Sai? What do you think about them? 
I have not because, of course, you know, <laughs> aquarium and I just shove my hands in and I, uh, right now we have a beautiful one named Nasuko. Oh, um, at New England Aquarium? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I have to go back and, and see Nasuko again. I, I sure do miss going every week, but um, I, I still try to get back. And now, now that we have our vaccines and um, treatments for COVID, it's, things are getting better about being able to go to the aquariums again. Yeah. I'm happy about that. But I love that you allow, you know, that you've created a virtual octopus encounter that is a wonderful thing and i'm going to share that yeah with and we um we're also trying to do because um there's some some people in the nation who are just like you know i'd rather see them uh in the wild so could we get an underwater camera and i was like oh you know i'm trying to really figure out how we how we connect live to somebody who is scuba diving and i was like i'm sure we will figure it out i'm sure you know um the technologist of octonation can make it happen um, but until then, know that we're we're definitely looking at trying to figure that that whole component out. Yeah, what's going um, on in Octopolis? Because I know that they have an array, of course, of, um, and this is the gloomy octopus, octopus yeah. tetricus. But it's, um, and I'm sure that most people in, in the nation know that this is a very large aggregation of octopuses that interact with each other, which was thought to be very rare. And um, they've they've got a, a series of of GoPros set up pretty much, I, th I thought, all the time. So maybe mm. that's something that that I don't know if there's a live feed. Um, GiantCuttlefish.com frequently Ooh. has. Have you been to GiantCuttlefish.com? I have not. Um, go to GiantCuttlefish.com. It is not just about giant cuttlefish. It's okay. Not, yeah. And you have like underwater cameras and things like that. that you yeah. Can, oh, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, maybe we could do that. We could have one. Um, we could have one set up. Like uh, that, that was uh, w uh, an article, a news article came out recently this year. I was talking to Sai about it. The um, and I believe it was that species, the octopus tetricus or, or gloomy octopus, was males throw thing or it, females throw rocks. Throw things. Males. Yes, at, yes. When they're being sexually harassed. Yes. <laughs> I think that's just brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, and so that article came out, and it was like you have these females like hurling rocks and in, in sediment, and uh, at males who are like trying to come up and mate with them, and they're like, "Hey, I'm not like I'm not open for that." And so mm -hmm. it just like another thing, you know, they're, they're more like us than, and yeah. Um, what else? There was there's something else that I was I was going to mention um, that um, yeah, other than those those encounters this month. Uh, we're going to be at Aretha Palooza in Dallas, October 8th and October 9th. So if you're in the Dallas area uh, and you're watching this, we're going to have a booth set up and we're actually going to be doing some of our uh, STEM activities. So, uh, Sai, we went to um, uh, we went to STEM Fest, which is in Waco, Texas, and there were over, I think, like 1500 uh, people that came through uh, and most of them were kids. And uh, we had a booth there and we put on Octopus Superhero Academy. And it was a series, it was a series of workshops that these kids could go through. And um, one of them, and it just showed off the different superpowers of an octopus. So one of them was Octovision and they put on these glasses that had mirrored lenses and they could see um, behind themselves. And so we would hold up images of things that typically ate the octopus, like birds or sea lions or, you know, um, eels. And they had to read what the animal was off the paper, but we were standing behind them. So it was just a really cool way to showcase like different superpowers of the octopus and have the kids kind of immerse themselves in what it might, what it might be, what it might look like to be an octopus and have this peripheral vision. <laughs> so that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I, and I also think that's really good for our souls to experience mm -hmm um what another experiences you know and octopuses are experiencing the very real world the same world we live in but in a totally different way yes so yeah so we have we have that excitement we have some other things coming up um too as well um and we'll we'll post them um on our website and let you know in the facebook group at octopusfanclub.com um when things are happening i have a couple of things that um well, as you know, um, Sai, with uh, octopuses at aquariums, they have their own personalities, right? And some of them, you know, 
um, are just like, nah, I don't want to do an octopus encounter. That's like not for me. Um, so you kind of have to, um, it has to be almost like that octopus's decision on whether or not it's going to come and interact with the keeper during the encounter. And so we've been in situations where, and I, you know, we always tell them in the Aquarius do this too. Hey, hey today's, it's not going to happen today. And then we just go into like education mode where we just start educating about the octopus. But yeah, octopuses, when you, that's the the thing about um, doing these virtual octopus encounters is some sometimes they'll play with you for a minute or two and then they're just off. Like mm -hmm. they're just like, so we respect that when, um, when that happens. And that's a great thing to teach, to be able to respect each individual and what they, they want and um, that they have that autonomy. Yeah, for sure. So Sai, thank you for uh, celebrating to, with us today uh, for the kickoff of Octopus Month. Um, a couple of reminders, Octopus, uh, World Octopus Day is October 8th. And so if you would like, you can always go to our website. Um, we have uh, Octomania, it's an activity book in our Octo Kids section. So if that's something that you wanna do on the 8th, you can do that. Uh, we'll also be, um, uh, I'll, I'll be getting back together with Brian Kessinger, who's a Disney animator and he's gonna be teaching uh, the nation how to draw a spooky octopus uh, oh. for, for Halloween. And so that's something to look forward to. But Sai, how are, are you gonna celebrate Octopus Month? And, uh, and what last words would, would you like to leave with the nation for this year? Well, I like to celebrate Octopus Month trying to do something for octopuses um, and for the sea. And um, I'm, I'm aware that there's now some efforts to factory farm octopuses. And whenever you put the word factory in, in, in front of something with living creatures, it's just not a good thing. So um, I, I think World Octopus Day, I'm going to be contacting some of our leaders and uh, trying to help them to see that you know, the way E.O. Wilson said that uh, burning rainforests um, to make way for, for farms and factories is like burning Renaissance paintings to cook dinner. Mm. That's how I feel about this. These are intelligent, sensitive, emotional animals who have so much to teach us who are here before us and that they deserve our, our respect and our, and our reverence. And anytime we do anything for the ocean, we're helping octopuses and we're starting to try to pay back the debt that we owe them for all they inspire in us. Yeah. And like I said, there's a lot that we can learn from the octopus. I always, re I remember when I was growing up and it seemed like on TV, you know, the only time we ever heard about, you know, uh, animal groups or anything like that was when they were talking or about how they were endangered. And I, I remember when I went to go uh, to my family with the idea of starting, you know, Octonation, just because I was looking for a little bit of support. And one of the first things that one of my family members said was, well, are they endangered? And it just kind of like pointed to how I think a lot of us were raised where it's like, maybe we should only consider uh, things when they are at the brink of extinction. And I sought out with Octonation to be like, no, we, there's a lot that we can learn from an animal that's literally been on this planet since before, almost trees, you know, um, and and that is still thriving today in our oceans. And is when people are just like, well, are, are, are any of them endangered? I'm sure some of them are, but for the most part, there, there's such a representation of thriving, of problem solving, of adaptability, of resilience, of, intelligence of you know problem solving there's so many positive attributes that i feel like the reason that we focus on the octopus here in octonation is to inspire wonder of the ocean through the lens of an octopus um and uh and we'll continue to do it and uh and continue to uh preach the octo gospel here at octonation and to <laughs> to um to really just show show the wonder um, of this creature and, uh, and point to all the reasons why we should love and respect the ocean. So uh, thank you so much, Sai. Well, big octo kisses times eight to all of you in the nation. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And thanks so much for following Octonation. We'll see you soon.